All right, we got another pretty good size house we're doing today. 56 by 25. It's actually going to be a double wide home put on this. We got four inches of concrete going down. We got a six mil vapor barrier down. Just first truck just showed up on the job about 7 a.m. We got so 10 and a half yards on each truck. We got our 3,500 pound mix. We got hot water, about 110 degree water in there. We got we're using some bag flake accelerator just to give it a kick because it's pretty chilly still. And this is where we're at today. Hey guys, Mike here. So I wanted to talk about uh, battery powered screeds. And if, if you think one's right for you or not, or should you go with a gas powered one, this video should really help you figure that out. We do a, a ton of these basement floors like this. They're flat, they're level. And we use the battery powered screed on pretty much all of them. We've used it all year long. Now, I've only got one battery powered screed. It's the one from MBW, the screed demon right there. I've had some other companies contact me and want me to, you know, want to send me theirs and, and have me try them and compare them, but no one's done that yet. So I can't really compare other people's battery screeds, but we're going to just talk about this one and if you think it's a good one for you. We, I, I will tell you this before we get going, you know, my guys love this one. It's lightweight. Um, for what we do, the slumps we do and what we pour, different size house floors and slabs and stuff like that, it works really good. But you're going to get to see here for yourself, you know, once we get the concrete all spread out here, I, I got the actual screed time. I left that in real time. So you can see how long it takes us to screed, how much effort it takes. Uh, you'll be able to tell there's a, a part of this I, I videotaped with my phone and I got right up close to it so you'll be able to tell how loud it is and how uh, how fast we go with it now when when I set out when we did this video I mean when we did the, the pour here I didn't I didn't know I was gonna make the vid, this video just about the, the vibra screed here the battery powered screed so it wasn't like my guys knew or I knew or we were hurrying or anything like that um, so it's you're gonna get a real good indication here just how this thing works for screeding now I have I have gas powered ones too I've got I don't know three or four different brand of gas powered Viber screeds and I mean those all work good too what I would say about the gas powered and the battery powered one is the gas powered ones seem to be for, for the most part they're a little bit heavier you know maybe five to ten pounds heavier than this battery one um, they they definitely are louder that's for sure they're a lot louder and they have more vibration I guess if you want to call it so maybe if you're pouring stuff that's very stiff very dry however you want to call it low slump concrete probably a gas powered one you know if you're doing that every day is going to be a little bit better for you if you're pouring slumps, like like we here, we're using a high range water reducer. We use that in pretty much all our pours, so we can pour a pretty flowable slump. So if you're up around the the fives, the sixes, the sevens for slumps, uh, the battery one's going to be <laughs> going to be a no brainer, really. I mean, so we're gonna we're getting this first truck dumped out. Like we got 21 yards coming here on this floor. It's 1,400 square feet. Um, We'll get it dumped out. We'll get it spread out. We get all our, our pads. Like we like making a center pad, like what Luke's doing right there. You can see him screeding. We got a nail through that stake right at grade, and then we have a chalk line snapped around the perimeter on the inside of that wall that we'll mag the edges to, and we'll use those wet pads for the vibra screed. Um, I don't know. I mean, that's how we do it. I've seen some other guys do it without the pads. They just kind of. They kind of eye it with the rakes and maybe put a maybe put like a uh, a receiver from the laser on the rakes and get it pretty close that way. Then they just go over it without any type of pads. I I don't know just how that stays level. To be honest with you. I mean, when we get done, when we get done power troweling and sawing this today, if when we go back, if we have to go back and check a floor with our laser, it's within an eighth of an inch. As far as being flat so I mean that's pretty darn good the way we do it we we also this is maybe something different we do than a lot of people we like to strike our pad our center pads with the with the hand screed 
That way we know uh, we're not digging in at all. We're not riding high at all. There's no, there's no uh, difference in elevations as far as the pads go. So the, the magged pads to the chalk line on the outside are exactly the same as that center pad. Now we'll take the, the battery powered screed and we'll use those wet pads as our guides. We, uh, that's me with the screed right there and then Luke is in the orange and then that's Harvey right there in the gray sweatshirt. So the real key is those two guys right there as you're screeding they're either filling in any little low areas or they're pulling back any high areas and that's going to be the real key so you guys get to watch here just the speed I go at and we don't hurry I could pull this back faster if I wanted to but I'm doing a couple things I'm keeping an eye on my two ends I want to make sure my ends are both touching the, the pads and the, it, the ends of the screed will actually leave a little bit of a line as you go and if you leave in that line in the concrete then you know your your both your ends are touching and you're good if if you don't see that line then you know your screed's riding a little high and you got a little hump there and if you stop and you just if you just stop walking or pulling back and you keep keep the hand on the throttle the vibration you're going to make a little bit of a hump i mean a a dip there so you want to keep pulling backwards nice and slow like i'm walking i'm filling my little boot prints in as i go back and then you can see i'm giving I'm giving Luke and Harvey plenty of time to do the raking behind me so they can keep it at a certain level. We like the concrete to be just a little high behind that, maybe like a half inch roll, not much more than an inch roll behind there. Otherwise, some of that concrete will vibrate right under the screen. So you can see the pace we're working at. It's not too fast. That area I'm screening right now is the 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 board on the screen is a 12 foot board so it's about 12 feet wide and it's about halfway down that foundation so about 26 feet I'm going right there you can see the bow float behind me when Darren runs that bow float it's pretty much just down and back and it's really nice and smooth there's no dips or humps under it. it's nice and flat and level he doesn't have to stop and fill anything and then we leave it like that, both load it until it's ready to power trial and ready to go. I mean, it doesn't get much easier than that as far as both floating either. So I'm going to post the time it took to do that one bay. We call that a bay right there. Two minutes and eight seconds to screed that bay. So, I mean, if we were to do that by hand, the same way we did the, the center pad, it would probably be pretty close to that. I mean, we might be able be able to even hand screed it the way we do a few seconds faster but it's a heck of a lot less effort with this screed so I've got this now we're on the second bay so we got basically four bays we're doing here with the with the two trucks the second we're still waiting for that second truck to show up No big hurry here. I mean, even with the hot water and the accelerator and the concrete, it, it screeds plenty fast enough. I'll have a link for this down in the description too, guys. If you guys want to check this out, I get it at, you can get it at Acme Tools through my link. Um, you know, just make sure you get the head and the screed. Now I'm using, we got all kinds of Milwaukee battery operated power tools. And the battery I use in this is just a 5 amp. You can use a bigger one if you want, but the 5 amp battery, we've never run out of a battery on a floor, any, no matter what size floor we've done. Now we haven't done like 10 or 15,000 square foot floors with this, but we've done multiple floors like this days in a row, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, without having to change out that battery. So the batteries, the batteries last quite a while, you don't really use much power. And you'll see at the end, I, I totaled up the total screen time that you'll see at the end. You don't really use the battery that much to screed something like this. You're not really screeding for that long of a time. So, I mean, you don't really need the big, big, huge 12 amp battery or 10 amp battery, whatever Milwaukee sells. I don't even have any of those big batteries. I think the biggest one I got is a 6 amp.
So here I'm going to show you with uh, my phone, that right there. You can listen to this. That's about as loud as it is right there. I mean, that's not very loud. You can actually talk to the person standing next to you, whereas most of the most of the gas-powered ones are twice as loud as that, and you get a hard time even talking to somebody. Darren tends to pull back a little bit slower than I do, which, I mean, it's no big deal. You can kind of see the lines on the end of the screed if you look now. Both sides of that, that board is leaving a little bit of a line. That's what we mean. That's when you know you've got that section flat. If any of that line disappears, then you know you've probably got a little bit of a hump under that, and you're going to want to stop, go back, redo it. So that's the first half of that floor. Two sections, two bays, we got screeded. Uh, Darren, it was 2 minutes and 42 seconds total time for that. So we're up, you know, around maybe 5 minutes, just under 5 minutes to do the first half of that floor for screeding. So that's... That's really not too bad. We got the second part coming up. You, now we're going to get this all pulled out. We'll get it. I'll speed this up a little bit. Pull it out so you, you don't have to wait too long for us just to pull it around. But I like for you to see the whole process. I mean, maybe you do it a little differently than we do. Let me know down in the comments if you pour, you know, similar to us. But this should be answering your questions on... You know what what fiber screed do I need? What kind? I mean the M I got both of MBWs. I got the gas and the battery. Like I said, I've got uh, Marshall Towns. I've got their gas powered one. I've got uh, two of the other two of the other well known brands. I haven't used them in so long. I forgot the names, but I've got their gas powered ones too. And I mean they all work. They all work. They all, some of them have just a little bit different handles, so some of them are a little more comfortable than others. Some of them have handles you can adjust, so you you know you can pretty much no matter who's doing it. We've these handles adjust up or down pretty easily within you know just a few seconds turning or not. So on this particular one, it's not bad as far as adjusting the handles. And me, Luke, and Darren we're all about the same height, so it doesn't really matter who grabs it. The handles pretty much stay in the same spot. That's the little shoot trick we use. If you've seen any of my other videos, you might have seen that before. That makes pouring over a wall like this quite a bit faster. You don't have to use like that little eight-foot shoot we were using earlier. Sometimes we'll, sometimes we'll use that with a saw hus, you know, going back the other way. But this is a lot faster if you can use it this way. We're trying not to walk too much in that big grade beam that was in the middle. That's right about at the top of our boots. There, so I'm going to come down this bay. You'll see the time on this one. And then we'll come down that other side. And then we'll total up the total amount of screed time so you can check that out. So check that out, guys. And I'll be back here in a minute.
So that's going pretty good, I think. You can see how fast I'm pulling that back. I mean, I wouldn't even really call it fast. I'd just say slow and steady. But you can see how consistent Luke and Darren are with the raking. I mean, they're moving. The one good thing about having a screed like this, you know, the battery screed or even a gas one is you could really do this with two guys. I mean, you could have one raker as long as he's good. But you may have to pull back just a little bit slower to give him time to watch both sides. Um, I don't know how you do this without a raker. I've seen some guys. I've seen some guys on YouTube use these without rakers, and it's just, it's just no way. The floors are getting flat. No way. I mean, you may be vibrating it, and it may be coming out smooth, but it's, it's not flat. I mean, we do this every day. It's just you've got to have some guys there raking. The guys raking are the ones really keeping the concrete where it needs to be. If you don't mind your floors being up and down a little bit, you know, half, three quarters of an inch or so, then, you know, don't worry about rakers. But if you want them really, really good and flat, you got to have some guys raking like these guys are right here. That's Harvey right there. Harvey's helping us out. He works for himself, but occasionally we'll call him in to help. You can see Darren's walking in that. He just got out of that real deep section now, so he didn't even have to stop for that. But... That's that's the the basis. So two minutes twenty six seconds for that side. Total square footage about fourteen hundred square feet, and the total screed time on this was about nine minutes twenty four seconds to do the whole house. So under ten minutes to screed this. I think that's really really good. If uh, if that doesn't help answer your questions, you know, then let me down. Let me know down in the comments if you've got any different questions. They do make all different size boards. You could get a 14 footer for this if you want. You could get an eight footer, 10 footer, whatever you think you're gonna use the most. We find that 12 works best for us. I could use a 14 footer. If if MBW wanted to send me a 14 footer, I'd definitely put that on and try it. Um, our hand screed is a 14 footer, but uh, that this is what works really well for us. So again, guys, let me know down in the comments if you've got any more questions. There's a link down there for this if you wanna check it out. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you on the next one.